Good afternoon and welcome to the second half of our doubleheader here at Kiwani High School between the Kiwani Boilermakers and the Boiler Girls against the Riverdale Rams and the Lady Rams. Unfortunately, the first game went to the Lady Rams by a score of 63 to 34. The Boilermakers are looking forward to maybe getting a victory here in this second game. Uh, my name is Russ Hughes alongside is uh, Steve Osborne and uh, Coach Osborne, good to have you with us again. Ah, glad to be with you, Russ. Uh, looking forward to a good ball game. You know, like I said in the first game, nowhere that I'd rather be on a gloomy day outside, come inside and watch some hoops. We're going to have the playing of our national anthem here momentarily, and then we'll have the starting lineups and we'll have the opening tip. On the PAs, Matt Costenson, Roger. We're also over there doing the book. Dave Spetz on the clock, and Dave Briner helping out also. And now we're going to have the playing of our national anthem as uh, presented by local 8078. Grab everyone's attention. We have a special birthday. Our athletic director, Mr. Atwell. We're not going to tell you how old he is. But on the count of three, let's do a little we'll singing sing for him. One, One two, two, three. Happy birthday. We ask that you please stand, gentlemen, kindly remove your casts as our local VFW Post 8078 present the colors as we join them to honor America during the playing of our national anthem. Go bad never gets old. Very good rendition. Again, thanks so much to the VFW local 8078. And now the starting lineups for this game tonight. The Boilermakers entertaining the Riverdale Rams. Non conference game, but still important in the scheme of things for the Boilermakers. First of all, Jake Willems, he put up 44 points the other night. He is a heck of a player. Paxton Canoe is a freshman. Williams, a senior. Brody Clark is a, a junior. No relation to Brady Clark. So we have a Brady and a Brody in the game? Jackson Tigler is a freshman. And the man in the middle will be Dawson Peterson. He is uh, also a senior. So we'll see how they do. There's some meat in there, but there's the athleticism is so good for Riverdale. You have to watch what they do. It's very important to for Q1 is to be as quick as they are and let's see what they do here. Hey, here we go. We're gonna have the starting lineups. Braden, Braden Lewis will be a 5'10 junior, one of the guards. Blaze Lewis, a six foot senior, will be one of the guards. Braden 
Conley, one of the forwards, the six foot two inch junior. Junior Murray, he has earned this starting position tonight. He is a six foot one inch junior. And Brady Clark, a six foot three inch senior, will be the other forward slash guard. Should be a fun time tonight for these two teams. And Kiwani comes in with a record of a five and four, and the Riverdale Rams come in with a record of eight and one on the season. Their only loss to Mercer County. Shows you how good Mercer County is, obviously. Yes. Looking forward to seeing a good game. What do you expect to see from what you've seen Kiwani this year so far? Well, hopefully, uh from the other night in the loss to IBC, hopefully the Boilers come out and shoot better. They got a lot of open shots. They just could not put the ball in the basket. And, I, you know, I expect that to get better today. Also, there were not a lot of assists in that game. Right. They need to, to set the picks, but they need to have the assists. A little, a little bit less one-on-one, -on -one maybe? In yes, the, in, sir. Yes, I got you. Yep. And at the center circle will be Junior Murray for the Boilermakers, and he will be Going against Willems. It's going to be taken by Kiwani and thrown away by Kiwani. So immediately a turnover for the Boilermakers. Gives the ball to the Riverdale Rams. And again, you've mentioned to me about their number four. That's Paxton do. He can't be anything he, over five foot two. Five, five foot, maybe. He's really short. That doesn't, he's an excellent ball player. Though he, I'm sure he deserves to be up on the varsity. Man to man defense thus far by Kiwani. A little bit of a walk there. To do with the basketball left wing three point arc being guarded over there by Graydon Lewis. And uh, no junk defense as of yet. They're very patient offensively, aren't they? Yes. Uh, you know, we talked about in that first game that uh, they needed to be a little more patient with the Boiler Girls, and uh, we are seeing it here now with Riverdale. With the basketball, Kadu gets over to the right hand side to Tigler. Tigler gets the ball inside to the big guy, Peterson. And he'll put the shot up and he scores. No, it's oh. out. I thought that was good. How about you? I uh, rolled around and came off. I thought it was I thought it was going down too. Somebody's got to help out. Uh, Brady Clark lost the handle on the basketball. Now he gets it back. Over to Blaze Lewis. And Lewis should have an opportunity to shoot that three here. Now they, it's his own defense. Is that right, O? It, it looks like a 2-3, Russ. Three-pointer up, no good. Rebound comes out on the weak side over to Jake Willems. And this kid is a player. 44 points. And uh, we'll see what happens here. Kadu has it now. No score yet. 6.40 left to go in this first quarter. Peterson with the basketball. Gets over the right-hand side. Dribble drive. Cut off there by the Kiwani Boilermakers. Brady, Brady Park. Park, good defense, yes. Back and forth in the paint at the free throw line, a shot put up and it, it's no good. Rebound, Peterson has it, he puts a shot of no good. And the foul, this time is good, and that shot was made by Tigler. Two to nothing with 6.15 left to go in the first quarter. Russ Hughes and Steve Osborne here for this basketball game. Looking forward to seeing if you want to get a victory here against a really good Riverdale team. Murray with the basketball. Back out front, now Blaze Lewis down the baseline. He goes, gets that over to the right side. To Braden Lewis, there it is! Nice it's shot. good! Nice shot, Braden. Boy, that was an important one, wasn't it? It was. You want off, right? What you that, that they need a quick start, yes. And, and to make that first shot, see it go through the basket, that's good. Shot put up and scoring is Jake Willems. Peterson. Oh, I'm sorry, Peterson. I, I thought that was Willems, but it was Peterson. So four to three is the score. Kiwani trailing by one here with 5.30 left to go in the first quarter. Blaze Lewis cut off there by Kadu. Freshman really plays well. Uh, you can tell he knows how to move that basketball. Now the ball's on the floor and it's going to be taken there by Peterson. We're going to have a foul now called and this will be on uh, Dawson Peterson. That'll be his first and the first foul of the afternoon. So glad you could join us again on Kiwani High School Sports and Special Events. Thank you so much to the Kiwani uh, School Board as well as uh, Dr. Chris Sellens for allowing you, us to bring you this along with the birthday boy and that would be of course uh, <laughs> Coach Tim Atwell. Long three-pointer left side, no good. And going up there, boy, I'll tell you what, Murray really got up in the air. He could not get that board. Willems with the basketball, that number two on his back. And he's going to dribble to the left-hand side of the three-pointer. Now brings it back out to Brody Clark. And you didn't hear me wrong, there's a Brody Clark, and of course, Kiwani's got their own Brady Clark. Down the baseline goes Willems. 
Back out front it goes. They're watching him now. It's going to have a foul called on Kiwani, their first one. And going to the free throw line for a pair will be Jackson Tigler. He has got the a deuce thus far for... And he's, he's a freshman also and looked very athletic on that play. Drew the foul. And he's at the free throw line for a pair. And again, uh, we want to make mention, no good on the first free throw. Five fouls in each quarter. I yes. know I'm probably, uh, you know, beating the, the subject down, but it's important for people to know that. It's five fouls in each quarter, and then you shoot two free and throws. And you shoot two. That's, that's a big change, and everybody needs to be aware of it. And uh, it's going to take a while for everybody to just realize that's what it is. 444 left to go now in this first quarter of play. And with it now, as we're in the corner, is uh, Lewis to Lewis. And it's going to be knocked out of bounds. Good defense that time by uh, Brody Clark, the junior. On Brady Clark, where he knocked, that's kind of who he knocked, stepped in front of to knock it away. He went with the basketball, down the baseline goes Brady Clark, gets it over to the corner for Lewis, he puts a runner up in the lane, no good, rebound comes out, and getting the rebound uh, is going to be Cadu, who's on the floor, Cadu was able to pick it up there. Boy, he did it that quick. This is a very quick basketball game. Long shot put up, no good, rebound comes up. Nice job by Blaze Lewis that time to tap that rebound over to his counterpart over there, and that was Braden Conley. Back out front. Blaze Lewis, top of the key, left side now, over to Graydon Lewis. Graydon Lewis gets it over to Braden Conley. Thinks better of it, now gets it back over now. To Murray now, to Clark, to uh, uh, Conley, no good on his shot. Kiwani cold from the field thus far, huh? Yes. They made that first one, and that's been it. And they beat Kiwani down the floor. Kiwani's gonna call a timeout here. That shot was made by Brody Clark. So seven to three, the score, just one shot made by Kiwani. Oh, what are we seeing here so far as the shots are concerned by Kiwani? Uh, Kiwani is uh, only one for four so far, and that was a three-pointer to open the game. Whereas uh, Rockridge is three for seven, so, or actually three for eight. Yep, Riverdale Rams really play good basketball, and they have a team that has been uh, nurturing this uh, for a long time, and they are an excellent uh, Fundamental team, too. And add the two freshmen to the varsity starting lineup with what they already had. They're going to be good now and good later. First time out called by either team. That will be called by Kiwani. That's a 30-second time. I will have the, at halftime, we will have the information for you about the Erie Workins uh, Classic. And Kiwani is going to be playing in that this year. And we'll tell you all about it. With the basketball to the time up by Kiwani. Junior Murray gets the ball back over to Blaze Lewis. Lewis, again, facing this... Tough zone defense. Riverdale's very aware of where Brady Clark is at. He always having trouble getting the ball inside. Blaze Lewis gets the ball over. Going to have a foul called on uh, Riverdale, and that's going to be, I believe, on Brody Clark. And he is limping. He might have have uh, hurt his ankle there a little bit. Let's see what happens. Look like a little bit of a dead leg, maybe. He uh, he's putting five new players in. That's something different. Okay, well, coming in uh, for Kiwani will be Devontae Jordan. Also coming in for Kiwani will be Colson Welgott, as well as Cashin Ellerbrock, and Blake Johnston. Ball comes in, it's gonna be taken there with the basketball to Cal Reed. And uh, Kiwani really uh, uh, using a lot of people. Now, wide open three by Elbrock. Oh, just off there, we're gonna have a, a, a whole call. And this will be on Riverdale. And this will be on Willems, I believe. That'll be his first. And the team's third. 3.04 left to go in this first quarter. Q1 and seven to three. And again, taking the ball out of bounds will be Devante, or sorry, not Devante, that is Cottrell Reed. Reed and Jordan are both in there. And with it is Ella Brock. Over to Reed, to Ella Brock. Long pass now over to well gotten, a shot put up, and good! Nice looking shot that time by Blake Johnson of the Boilermaker. Needed that right there. Yeah. Soft shot for a, a big guy. And somebody's gotta get on him, that's Willems. He gets his first basket of the night. 2.30, or the afternoon, I'm sorry. 2.33 left to go now in this first quarter play. Blake Johnson now gets it over uh, to Jordan. Devontae Jordan, dribble drive into the paint, now gets it over to Cottrell Reed, takes the three. And he's going to go in the paint, puts a shot in the paint. Good! Nice looking play. Dribble drive right to the basket by Reed. And what was good right there, he got off his feet very quickly. 
Oh, and boy, what a good job that time by Blake Johnston. Looked like he might have uh, uh, stuffed Jackson Tigler, but instead it will be a foul on Blake. That will be his first and the team's first. Well, the thing that's concerning about that, if you're the Boilers, they beat you down the floor again. I mean, you, you've got to get back on defense. Yeah, we'll see what they can do here coming up. But two free throws uh, coming up for Jackson Tigler. He missed. He was one for two before. He's missed the first one here again. He's got three points thus far on the afternoon. Coming into the game is Eris Morgan, a sophomore for the Riverdale Rams. Nine to seven, two eleven left to go in this first quarter. Yeah, they. Uh, that's more youth they brought in right there, Russ. Boy. Second free throw is good this time. He's two for four from the free throw line. And so the Boilermakers with a chance here to cut it into the lead a little bit. They're down by three. They could tie it up or get within one. Colson Well got now over uh, to Devontae Jordan. Ellibrock. And Cottrell Reed into the paint again. Puts it up. No good. And a rebound going to be taken out of there. Foul going to be called by Kiwani. And I think this is going to be a Blake Johnston, if I'm not mistaken. I believe he was over the back that time, yes. It is about Blake Johnson. It's his second. And he'll have to have a seat here. And coming in to replace him uh, will be the Dantavian, Dantavian Johnson. And Johnson has a seat. He's got those two fouls. And that is three team fouls for each team with 150 left to go in the first quarter. Willems has the basketball. Knocked away. Good job by Kiwani. He's... Uh, uh, Thomas, but yep. unfortunately he stepped out of bounds. So, coming back now, that's 11 players that have played now for Kiwani in this. In the first quarter, that's yes. very unusual. Five second call, and it's gonna be taken out of there by Clark. Brody Clark, not a Willems. Willems looking to get a three off, and he's got two, three guys on him all now. Shot put up, and it is good though by Morgan, and that makes the score 12 to seven, a five point lead now. Colson Wilcock can shoot the three. He has six of them in one game this year. We'll see if he can get untracked here, but they're watching him like a hawk. Yeah, and that's key to Kiwani's offense. When they shoot well, they they you know they win. When they don't, it's trouble. Noah Brock has it, puts a three up in the left wing, three point arc. That is, it's good. He went back with an deuce. One minute left to go in this first quarter. Boy, it's been entertaining. Two heavyweights fighting it out. 12 to 10. Riverdale with the lead. Williams with the basketball. At the three point arc, left hand side. Look over now, gets it to Cadu. Cadu, that uh, young man, small in stature, but not in consistency in basketball knowledge. Now, three pointer put up. Oh, my goodness. It's good from three feet beyond the arc. He's got five. And that makes it 15 to 10. Cottrell Reed with the basketball. Gets it over and it's gonna be thrown away. It was gonna get over Devontae Jordan, but not good. So a turnover with 30.4 seconds left to go in this first quarter. It goes over to the Riverdale Rams. I mean, good idea, but just didn't execute right there. Devontae Jordan on the defense on Willems. Willems dribble drive. Going to be stopped there. Hands the ball off. Cadu has to go. Oh, oh, and he was looking past Colson. Well, got looking to where he was going to pass the ball. Yes. Got to catch it first, Russ. Yep. That's exactly right. We're going to talk a little bit about what's going on in this game. Right at the end of this quarter, 17 seconds left to go. He went trailing by five, 15 to 10 with a basketball. Colson well got number 23 on your roster. And it's going to be taken out of there by Jordan with six seconds left to go. And now to Ellibrack puts a three up top of the key. No good. And Cadu will get the rebound, but that's the end of the first quarter with a score. The end of the first quarter. 15 to 10, Riverdale with the lead. And uh, Steve Osborne, yes. you know, you and I have been watching Kiwani for a number of years. Tell me what your thought is uh, when you saw what happened in that first quarter. You said you've seen Riverdale play this year. I've seen him play on um, online, watching games on the computer. But watching here, they, they seem much quicker than they did, obviously, live. And uh, I thought Kiwani would have a quickness advantage, but I, I'm not so sure. And, uh, it's also inter interesting what Coach Clark is doing playing all these kids. I don't know if he's sending a message or, or trying something different, but uh, it's interesting. So, because when was the last time you've seen Brady Clark out of a game this long? I mean, not very often. When he fouled out of a game uh, a year or two ago. A year or two ago, yeah. Yep. 
Well, I, I have to mention that I, I, I like the fact that they are going ahead and we're getting a lot of uh, of rest for the first five guys. Let's see what they can, the second five guys can come oh, out. Right. They're going to start the second quarter. And there, yeah, he's not putting those starters back in. So I don't know if he didn't like what he saw in the start of the game or what, but uh, 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 sending a message is probably uh, what I'd bet on here. Colson Wellgott, Passion Ellibrock, as well as uh, Cottrell Reed and Devontae Jordan, and who am I missing? One per, oh, okay, that, uh, Thomas also out there for Kiwani. And with the basketball, the Riverdale Rams, they get the ball, they get the ball to start the second quarter because he wanted to got to start the first quarter. Now three-pointer put up, no good. Rebound, oh, nice play by Cottrell Reed for the Boilermakers. And it's going to be taken out of there by Thomas. We're going to have a traveling call on Thomas. It was a tough pass. It was a tough pass. And, you know, that's only their third turnover, but uh, you, you just can't uh, have unforced errors like that. The shooting is, is the big thing big difference here, I, at least I think it is, uh, with the basketball. Oh, Colson Wellgott almost got. Oh, and uh, a steal by Wellgott, and he will get it over. Nice play by Wellgott. Did Kiwani get it? And it's going to be Kiwani basketball, though. Mm. Wellgott did a nice job of getting that basketball. Yes, huh? yes. The junior. Made it made a good kickoff pass, but they just couldn't put it down. For the basketball is Reed. Devontae Jordan. Now we're going to have what? A technical for being on the line. Is that what he said? I didn't see. I'm, gonna, go I'm, ahead. Not sure, I'm not sure what he called, Russ. He did call a technical, but what for? I have no idea. I think it was... Yep. I guess he stood on the line. Or I, I think he yeah. called... A, was that like an out of bounds traveling? You can't travel out of bounds. Was that what he did? Stepped on yeah. line as he's throwing it in? And a one and one coming up for Jake Willems. And actually, two free throws coming up because it's a. And again, there's no more one and one, and the first free throw is good. And that foul then is on Cottrell Reed. And uh, that's his first, but the team's first here in the second. Both free throws are good. And we'll see how that looms in the scheme of things in this game. 17-10 now, and they take the ball out of bounds. And they get the ball, too. That's, you know, tough situation for the Boilers right there. Bernie Clark will take the ball out of bounds, and he does. Gets in the backcourt to Cadu. Cadu moves the ball over to Tigler. The dribble dry gets it in. Stolen away by Kiwani. That was a fast hand to Cottrell Reed, I believe. Yes, you, you, are, you are correct. He got his hand in the passing lane. Three-pointer up by Wellgott. Got That is! They needed that. They needed that right there. You That's called it, Russ. Uh, Kiwani gets it, and the, the Boilermakers, Colson Wellgott gets a three to go, and that makes it 17-13, 655 left to go. And well, I'll tell you what, this Willems is a player, and he is being hounded. It looks like a man-to-man, -man, maybe a, a sagging defense. Kiwani gets the ball over. It's going to be out of bounds, and Kiwani gets the ball back. There you that, go. That's two straight turnovers for, for Riverdale. You know, Kiwani picking up the defense a little bit right there. That's their fourth turnover of the game. And here, we, come, here come the starters back in. Line change for the Boilermakers. Line change, I like that one. <laughs> Matt Gossenson said. Of course, he's the head of the uh, Kiwana Hayes School uh, Hall of Fame Committee. We should yes. appreciate uh, him. Uh, the Gossenson family started that a while back, I believe. Yep. Graydon Lewis with the basketball. And out there is Graydon Lewis. Blaze Lewis. Junior Murray. Brady Clark gets the ball over. It's going to be on the line, unfortunately. And also out there for Kiwani is, is him, oh, uh, uh, Braden Conley. Braden Conley. And coming into the game for the Rams the first time is Jacob Watson. He's a junior. 17-13 is the score. 6.25 left to go in this first half. And with the basketball is Willems. They're paying attention to him, obviously. 44 points in the game is very unusual. Yes. In high school basketball. Tap away. Wow, nice effort. By Conley. Another hand in the passing lane. They've got their hands on the last three passes right there, the Boilers have. And, and, and that's a very good point, uh, Steve Osborne, the fact that they're really playing good defense and they yes. need to against this team. Th that you're exactly right. Willems the basketball, dribble drive. He's stopped over there by Junior Murray. Now a long three-pointer up. No good this time. Rebound by Brady Clark. Brady Clark off to the races. Let's see if he can get a shot up. He does. No good. And the ball comes out, and it's going to be taken out of there. Williams has it. And got to watch out for him. We're going to have a foul called on Blaze Lewis. I like the defense, though. You stop Williams from going in and getting an easy yes, shot. You're exactly right. Yep. His first. Lewis picks up his first, and the team's second in this quarter. 
Taking the ball out of bounds will be Jake Willems. He of the 44 points earlier this season. He looks like he's what, maybe 6'3", six, 6'4"? Six, he's a big kid. Oh, a steal by Brady Clark! Clark, two on one. Puts a shot up, no good. A little bit of contact, no call. We're gonna have a foul on Kiwani now. Good sportsmanship by Dawson Peterson. Helping Brady Clark up. Might have been a little bit of a force by Brady that time. He really didn't have an advantage. That was the first foul on Braden Conley. And the team's third already in this quarter. If you want to keep playing defense, though, they can turn this thing around right now. They're only four points down. 17-13, as Coach Osborne says. And with the basketball, once again, are the Riverdale Rams. And again, that is Jacob Watson, just came in the game, loses the handle of basketball, gets it back, right-hand side now, goes over into the hands of Jackson Tigler. They move the ball around. Man-to-man -man defense by Kiwani, and the shot put up. No good on the fade, but the Kiwani did not box out, and no. scoring is Tigler. You, you gotta box. You know, again, when you're behind, you can only give that other team one shot. 19 to 13, and that was a, we call a bunny. Junior Murray has the basketball now at right wing of the three-pointer. Gets it over now to Graydon Lewis. Lewis dribbles around. Blaze Lewis has it. Brady Clark has it. There's a three-pointer up on the way. No good. Rebound is going to be taken out of there by Willems again. Boy, he got up on the air there, too. And he got away with a little bit of a carry. Watson basketball now gets it up once again to Tigler. And uh, with the basketball is Colton Huffman, who just came in the game. Willems has it. All the way, he's going to put a shot. He'll be fouled. He'll go to the free throw line for a pair. That was a nice job by him getting to the basket that time. Kiwani had no choice but foul him. And that is going to be hurting. Conley. Conley gets his second. He's going to have to take a seat also. The, the thing is that with, with Willems in there, it, 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 he's going to make his free throws, obviously. And yep, there he comes out. Now he'll be replaced by... Jordan and, well Jordan and Well got will come in replacing Lewis. Second one coming up here. But again, four fouls for Kiwani, so there's two free throws from here on out, and uh, with 4.42 left to go in this first half. And you know, they just got away with a foul there, too. Oh, my goodness. That was uh, not a good call. Nobody's perfect, but I'll tell you what. Jackson Tigler came over the back that time. That was actually a no call when it should have, uh, something should have been whistled. Yep. It, they called it out of bounds on Kiwani. So 20 to 13 and taking the ball out of bounds will be the Riverdale Rams, unfortunately. A little bit of a mop-up situation down there. By the way, our videographer again, uh, Jacob Doan, does a great job. We appreciate what he does in football, basketball, wrestling, you name it, that young man. Volleyball, he does it all, and we appreciate him taking the time to do it. He's here for most everything. Willems down the baseline, no. Gives it up instead. And uh, shot put up, no good. Rebound comes out and getting the ball. That was a nice play that time by Junior Murray. He really got a big time and ripped that ball out nice of there. Nice rebound, yes. Ball comes over to Colton Wells got, well got for three, no good. That, that would have been big if Kiwani could have got it. 4-10 left to go in this first half. And uh, shot put up in the paint and no good. Rebound comes out and good positioning on the weak side by Kiwani's Jordan. Colson Wellgon is in no man's land, and he'll get it back out to Devontae Jordan. Now three-pointer put up by Brady Clark. There it is! There, Brady, Another. Brady needed that. That's his first points of the game, I think. Yeah, you're right, sir. He, he needed that. But you know what? It was big in the scheme of things, though, too. 20 to 16, a four-point lead, Steve Osborne. 345 now left to go in this first half, and we're going to have a traveling call. Good call by the official. Trying to get a step on Brady Clark was... Uh, Jake Willems and a little bit of a, a walk there. Uh, here's a shot for Kiwani to get back-to-back -back baskets, which I don't believe they've had yet. Ball comes in over now to Colson Wellgott. Blaze Lewis, Junior Murray gets it back over. Brady Clark takes the three, and it'll be fouled. Good call by the official. And Willems will be called for the foul. That will be his second foul. And the team's first in the second quarter. Oh, that could be big, too, for the Boilers if you know, he has to spend a little time on the bench. And he will. I wonder if he comes out here. Nope. nope. Coming back in will be Brody Clark. And Brody Clark will replace Colton Huffman. I, I imagine the coach you know, feels comfortable with senior in there. He can keep him. And shot put up, no good. Foul over there. But they're going to say incidental contact. I thought that was a, 
uh, foul also. 20 to 16, Kiwani had the basketball. Junior Murray on defense. I, I love to see him now that he's gonna take the ball. It's gonna be a push by Kiwani. Evidently from behind. So two free throws coming up for Willems. Murray will pick up his uh, second. I oh, was at first foul. No, that's the second foul, excuse me. And the team's sixth, and there's the first free throw. Willems is automatic from the free throw line. He's four for four in this, four, five for five in this quarter. He's got another one coming up here. He's got a nice stroke. Murray out for Kiwani. Cottrell read it back in for the Boilermakers. 3 11 left to go, and then both free throws are good. He, in this quarter, he has one, two, three. He's got C six for six from the free throw line. Wilson Well got with a basketball. Got to reverse, got to reverse and beat the people to the, to the spot. Shot put up good. Oh, nice play by Brady Clark. Nice job getting to the basket that time. 22 18. And we're now going to have a timeout called by the Riverdale Rams. Didn't like what they saw because Kiwani was in full court pressure. Yes, and, and also uh, they're obviously all over Clark, Brady Clark in this game. And uh, he's got a couple of baskets now, so he probably wants to remind him, you know, you got to stay on him. Mm -hmm. And two fouls, by the way, for Blake Johnston, Braden Conley, and Junior Murray, just for Kiwani, so you know. And, Two fouls for Jake Willems only. They only have four fouls in this game. It's been a very physical game too, by the way. Yes, it has been. Been a couple, uh, you know, I never want to say anything about the officials, but maybe questionable calls. It could have went either way, but uh, just didn't go Kiwani's way. No. So glad you could join us in Kiwani High School Sports and Special Events on YouTube Live. Russ Hughes is my name alongside is Steve Osborne. Well, the girls were defeated by Riverdale earlier, and Riverdale's leading in this game, but we're hoping to see it not uh, come that way. Hopefully, Kiwani can get a W here. Three-pointer left wing, three-pointer, no good. Rebound comes out. Brady Clark has it, trying to push the ball down the court, and he's going to take it all the way into the paint. Now, a three-pointer by Jordan, no good. He gets his own rebound, however. Can he put it up and get it in? No, he cannot. And could have been called for a foul there. No good, 0 for 2 that time for Kiwani. Still a four point game and a walk. Good call by the official there. And uh, you know, I got a feel for Brody Clark. He looks like he's hurt, Coach. Uh, um, Coach uh, O. For Riverdale? Yeah, look, moving he's little, still yimp, limping, moving, look at him. Moving a little gingerly, isn't he? Yeah, he is. What year is he? Uh, junior. Second time I call by Kiwani now. That's why there's a stoppage in play, 22 to 18. And again, uh, those are both of the 30-second variety timeouts by the Boilermakers. Riverdale has got just one 30-second timeout they've used. Otherwise, they've got a full contingent of timeouts. Yeah, you know, and, and it's only a four-point game. It seems like Riverdale's leading by more, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it, yeah. But uh, Kiwani's right in the ball game. It's just shot or two away. So, And if Williams doesn't get those free throws, Kiwani's got a lead. Yes. And Kiwani could cut into this lead, maybe get it to within two or one here. Brady Clark going to be cut off there, and he's been pushed and shoved, and a foul going to be called on the Riverdale Rams. That'll be on Eris Morgan. That'll be his first and the team's second in this quarter. And that was a good call right there. He basically hipped him right out of bounds. His first team second. Kiwani will take the ball out of bounds. Clark has it, puts it up, and good! Nice bang, bang, for it too. Hit. Nice, simple out of bounds play. Got a, got a basket right off the pass inbounds. Ball comes over, and it's going to be saved momentarily. He has it, and blocked, blocked away by Blaze Lewis! Ball comes over now to control Reed. Back over to Brady Clark for a three. No! In and out. And unfortunately, it was 22 to 20 is the score, though. Oh, my goodness. Brody Clark has the basketball, and he is limping out there. That did everything but go in. Yeah. Shot put up, no good by Willems. He's not on his game either. Shot put up, no good. Rebound by Colson Welgott on the weak side. And it's going to be taken out of there by Welgott. And now it's going to be saved. Willems, really, those lazy passes, he looks it and see where it is. Where it is. He's at the free throw line. Now gets it over. They move the ball around pretty well. That's to Watson. And now going to be a foul called. It'll be on Kiwani. Now like it looks like they're coming this way. Oh. I think he must have called it a turnover. I'm not sure what happened, but yeah, Kiwani's definitely taking the ball out. 
Wow, by the way, coming back in for Riverdale is Dawson Peterson. Plays Lewis. Brady Clark has it now, well over to Walcott. Good job. Control read from a three. That is! He won, he's got the lead. 23 22. Picking up that shooting a little bit. Ball comes over to Willems, and he is pushed off. Now a foul going to be called, and th that was that's good sportsmanship by Cottrell Reed there, uh, huh? He helped him up immediately, yes. 20 foul, number 11, Cottrell Reed. So he picks up his second, by the way, and Kiwani's sixth. So isn't that just shooting? Would have been two free throws anyway. 49.1 seconds left, and Kiwani leading in this game, 23-22. Now it's tied up. Again, he, they are, he is... Seven for seven from the free throw line in this game. Without his seven points, this is a one-sided game, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. Second free throw is good. He's he's eight for eight from the free throw line. Wow. And that really touched much rim either. Uh -uh. <laughs> Every one. 43 seconds left to go in this first half. Ball comes inside to Elbrock. Elbrock brings it down. Now gets it over to Blaze Lewis. That kick is to Devontae Jordan. And... Clark has it. He is going to get the ball back over. A three-pointer by Blaze Clark. Blaze Lewis, excuse me. And it's no good. Rebound taken out of there by Williams with 23 seconds left to go. He only tries to knock it away. Now three-pointer up, and it's going to be no good. Peterson with the rebound. Back and forth. And it's going to be blocked by Elbrock. But they're going to call a foul on him. Mm. So Cash and Elbrock will be called for his first. And uh, two free throws coming up. For Dawson Peterson, he has two points in this game thus far. First free throw by Peterson is good, no good to hit the back of the rim. That was a couple football players right there on that play. Because uh, Peterson's a, a good sized young man, and of course Ellerbrock is too. And they both and they do both play football. Pa pair of linemen yeah. going at it down on the low post. Second free throw is also no good, and the rebound comes out to Wani. Down by one, have the basketball with 10 seconds left to go in this first half. Brady Clark has it in the corner. And with three seconds, he puts a shot up no oh, good. Oh, foul. Yep, and that's the end of the first half with a score. Riverdale leads it 24 to 23. We will be talking here at halftime with the, the one and only head basketball coach for the Riveters. Coming up here should be a fun time. Uh, just a minute here, we'll be talking with him. See Aaron Pratt walking over there, and uh, uh, he's not going to be joining us, of course. But uh, let's talk about the game just a little bit uh, before I let you finish your stuff up there, my okay. friend. Okay. And and for, before I start doing mine too, because it's pretty fresh in my our minds. Yeah, coming up here will be Dayton Nance real quickly. As you mentioned, it, it seemed like that maybe that the uh, Riverdale Rams were well ahead in this game, and and they were not. Kiwani within four or six points, mainly four points most, and Will Willems has been contained, even though he had all the free throws. He had eight free throws, a, a three and a deuce, so he has 13 points in the game to lead all scores. Right. But my, my point in saying this is the fact that the Boilermakers have been patient. Now, 11 players have played for Kiwani, so they are a fresh team right now. Right. So, defensively, they're, they're doing what they have to do. They got a lot of fouls, but a lot of players have got the fouls. For Kiwani. Right. So, they've spread them around, exactly. Yeah, I was thinking, if they just keep playing the good defense, knock the ball away, whatever they have to do, but they need to be able to confront and keep themselves between the, the ball, the, the shooter, and also the, the basket. If you do that, you're going to have a hand in the face. It's tough for them to make shots. In the face. And they have gotten their hand in the uh, passing lane a lot of times and deflected them and uh, you know, got several turnovers from Riverdale that way. I, the way I see it is Kiwani's got a choice. Let, uh, let Willows have his points and stop everybody else or, or or just the opposite, you know, really tighten up on him and, and let make other guys from Riverdale shoot their shots. So, you know, so far, like you said, he's got, what, 15 of their 24 points? So he's definitely their focal point. But he's got... He's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's eight for eight from the free throw line. 
And then you've got five more. He's got one three and one deuce. So 13 points in the first half for okay. him. So he's got more than half their offense. So, you know, and actually, you know, keeping him that low is not that bad if you had 44 the other night. So. Yeah, but you're going to have to keep that intensive. Well, and, and, They're going to find ways of getting him open, though. Right, exactly. And, and quite frankly, Kiwani still not shooting like I know they can. Better than the other night, yeah. But, uh, you know, for the the way this first half is, what Kiwani's only down by one. I mean, so they're right in the ball game. You get a little bit of run, get a lead, and, you know, Kiwani could take this thing. And in actuality, they, they led 23 to 22 in this game, too. Yes. After that last basket. That's and, true. And we, we looked at Brady Clark. He was fouled there right at the end. So, boy, these. Uh, yeah, that was, that was a, a bad no call right there. These uh, dancers out there really doing a good job. And you, you see, they're, they've got the one silver glove on the hand. So it's kind of cool to see that. Uh, the old Michael Jackson yeah. deal. Yeah. <laughs> it was all Michael J Michael Jackson music, too, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's no band here. But, boy, they've, they've taped all the songs, and it just sounds marvelous. That, that's an it? excellent idea, whoever thought of that, to tape uh, to tape the band and play them even when they're not here. You know, that's I don't remember them doing that in the past. So, yeah, that was a very good idea. The only time that they've done that is during the um, National Anthem. Yes, I have heard that before. But as far as, like, the entertainment music and all that, that's pretty cool. Well, here's a big thing in this game, and that is, let me give you the, st the scoring for Riverdale, first of all. And uh, free throw-wise, they are 10 for 14 from the free th from the charity stripe. Eight of those were by... Jake Willems. Uh -huh. That's a lot by one player. He was 8 for 8 in the second quarter. Jackson Tigler was uh, 2 for 4 in the first quarter. In the second quarter, Dawson Peterson was 0 for 2. Uh, leading them in scoring is Willems with 13. 6 for Jackson Tigler. And uh, 2 apiece for Brody Clark, Eris Morgan, and Dawson Peterson. The Boilermakers were led in scoring by Brady Clark. He ended up with a total of seven in the first quarter, five for Cottrell Reed, uh, three apiece for Graydon Lewis, Colson Walgott, and Cashin Ellibrock, and two for Blake Johnston. Uh, the score here at halftime, the Boilermakers trailing by one, 24 to 23. Oh. Yeah, uh, some stats, Russ? Please. All right. Uh, the Boilers have uh, actually made five three-pointers. Uh, they're three for eight, so not shooting too bad. To or actually five for 11, I'm sorry, but not shooting too bad from the three-point line. Uh, overall, they're nine for 23, so a little bit better than the other night. Um, Riverdale's actually only seven, uh, seven for 19 total, but like you said, they've got a number of free throws, and, and they have yet to make a three. Uh, rebounds, uh, Riverdale is out rebounding the Boilers 19 to 11, and uh, actually uh, five of their 19 are offensive rebounds, so you know that gives them extra chances. And uh, Riverdale also has more turnovers because Kiwani picked up the defense a little bit after the first quarter. Uh, turnovers is nine to six for uh, Kiwani only has the six, and you know Riverdale's turned it over nine times. So uh, maybe these stats are a little bit misleading, but uh, you know we got a close ball game, and that's what counts. Uh, maybe because of the defensive pressure that Kiwani has. Yes, and, and, and you know they had, they got off to a hot start. That that was the thing with Riverdale. If their shooting was really good in the first quarter, and totally fell off in the second quarter. So. You know, it's kind of deceiving that way. Well, I'd like to make mention real quickly. Uh, we talked a little bit before uh, about the uh, Cliff Workins Memorial Classic over at Erie, uh, Illinois, and uh, Kiwani's going to be participating in that this year. They will be playing in the uh, in the C. Uh, they got a pool C. They'll be playing Orion and Stark County. And uh, if they beat Stark County on Wednesday, which that game's at 4:30. And then on Thursday, they'll be playing at uh, 3 o'clock against Orion. And so if they win both those games, then they will be playing on Friday at 7.30. And if that happens, we'll bring you that, that game on WKEI. And, and, and they're actually playing in Prophetstown this year, correct? No, no it says Erie here. I, I could be uh, wrong. I'm not, I'll, I'll, I will find out because okay. I'll, I'll call and find in, the information out. But if they win that game then, because that's the first place in Pool B and, and pool place in, in first place in Pool C, then they would play on Saturday for the championship game at 7.30. But just so you know, we will have that, that game 
on Friday. So, whether it's it's the earlier game at, at uh, 4.30, I'm sorry, yeah, 4.30, or the game at 7. So they've changed their format. They've went away from bracket play and kind of playing pool play, which is which is different than all the winners of the pools play for the the title. That's that's different. That's kind of cool. Yeah, and, and everybody is is guaranteed uh, not just two games or three games. They're all guaranteed four, four games, games yeah, right? Which is nice, and uh, it's a very classy, uh, a well run tournament. Oh yes. my goodness, it really is nice. Um, the other thing I noticed is you said that you might play Stark County. Yes. They'll be going against Will Rumble, who was here last year. That's a good point. Yes, yes. And he's playing pretty well out here over there. Is too. he really? Yeah. Okay. I've heard. I, I saw that he had uh, a number of points. Um, the other day, I uh, was reading the uh, Star County News and uh, some information about him. And then, of course, Orion, uh, Kiwani is, is still plays them, and, and I believe that Kiwani will go play Orion at Orion this or, year. Over there, yeah. yes. And their head coach is one of the nicest people you ever meet in your life. His name is Larry Anderson. Uh, yes. He is my very, very good friend, a uh, uh, good Christian man, wonderful person, and he's been coaching that team for years and uh, very, very, very um, uh, uh Classy guy, and his son is the uh, sophomore coach of a Oh, really? Okay. okay. He's a sophomore coach. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm kind of familiar with Orion. I don't know if you remember or not, but yes. I actually lived there for eight years. Yes, and not only that, but your nephew. My nephew ended up his there. high school career there, yes. Oh. Yeah, and he's now Kiwani policeman, and his name is? Sean Grzeska. There you go. And he's actually the... Uh, resource officer here at the high school. Yep, and we see him here all the time. Yep, does a great yeah. job. The kids love him, but he likes doing it, so that's cool. The main thing is that he does a good job, obviously. He does a good, well, and, and, and the, the funny thing... Like him, but also, he likes doing it. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and the funny thing about it, see a number four out here? Yeah. That's how big Sean was when he was in high school. Oh, he was a little guy. He was a I little guy. The, I'll even go ahead and say it. He's like 6'3", 250. He's just a big guy now. So I, I wouldn't mess with him. He done a lot of growing after high school. <laughs> <laughs> well, all that being said now, it's 24-23 here at halftime, and Kiwani will get the ball to start the second half, uh, Steve Osborne. Uh, again, my name is Russ Hughes. Steve and I are doing the game here tonight. And, and uh, by the way, the first game, uh, which was here, in, in, is archived, by the way, uh, is the, uh, the Boiler Girls were defeated by the Riverdale Lady Rams 63-34. to And the Boiler Girls, uh, they played well. They were just kind of, I don't know, what do you say when it's girls outmanned, outgirled? Riverdale just had a very a very good ball club. And, you know, and, and Kiwani played well for a while but also had some mistakes, and, and Riverdale took advantage of them. And they had a couple of very good players as well. And a couple of freshmen too. And by the way, Maya Deering, I think we think was uh, ill, and that might be the reason why. Yeah, I, could, I, yeah. I was watching that first game. She made a three and turned around and gestured to the coach, and she came out and really never went back in. So that's a very, very good possibility. Kiwani with a basketball on the floor for Kiwani. Devontae Jordan, Cottrell Reed, Braden Conley, Blaze Lewis, as well as Brady Clark. Down the baseline they go. Buck comes over. It's going to be knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Kiwani. And by the way, out there for Riverdale, their original five starters, uh, Jake Willems, Paxton Cadu, Brady, Brody Clark, uh, Jackson Tegler, and also Dawson Peterson. And, and now Williams is making himself known on defense. So he's, he almost looked like the last two times he known where the ball was going. That must come from a little scouting of Kiwani. Do you think maybe they're... Uh they're kind of uh, pushing him a little bit. Maybe he was challenged at halftime by that, 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 That's a very good possibility. Pick it up on the defensive end. You're correct. By the way, uh, Matt Clark is the head coach for Kiwani, assisted by John Henniger, the varsity assistant. Dayton Ince is the sophomore coach, the freshman coach, Aaron Pratt. With a basketball three-pointer, right side no good off the front of the rim, and getting it on the strong side this time is Willems. Willems to Cadu. 24-23 still the score. 7-20 left to go in this three-quarter of play. Williams with the basketball. Devontae Jordan with a pass. And now they fake the three. They move the ball over. Williams with a three, no good. A rebound comes out. Brady Clark doing a good job. And immediately gets on, the, on his, uh, his speed. And three-pointer by Blaze Lewis. No good. It's going to be knocked away. And getting it out of there is Brody Clark. Otherwise, q has got a two-point lead. Brody Clark with the basketball. He gets down the floor in a hurry. Got to be careful. Willems will beat you big time. He has not made, he's made one three-pointer so far. Ball put up. We're going to have a shot. It's going to be good by Peterson. And he will go to the free throw line to try to create that three-point play the old-fashioned way. He used his way. body right there very well. He's just a big, husky young man. Conley picked up his third foul there. 
team first. And by the way, the head coach is Alex Kelly for the Riverdale Rams. A coach, the coach is Siebert, Rich Siebert, and Kyle Smelly. With the basketball is Kiwani. And now it's taken away from the Boilers. And all the way, shot put up, no good. Rebound, Kiwani. Riverdale both fighting for it. Kadu gets it on the floor. Oh, just the basketball shot put up, a left-handed shot, and it's no good. The follow, though, they did not block out Jackson Tegler. 28-23, it's five-point lead. It was four straight points scored Whoa, by, that was close. by the Riverdale Rams. Yeah, it was. They almost, rather than to, to pass the ball, he dribbled, which is good. Otherwise, it would be a turnover. Yes. Cottrell Reed with the basketball. Gets it over down the baseline. Goes Brady Clark, gets it back out front. Control Reed, or Devontae Dredd, I'm sorry. He puts a shot up in it. It's no good. Kiwani cannot buy a basket. They are altering their own shot. Kadu with the basketball, gets the ball over. Shot put up. It's going to be a foul called on Blaze Lewis. Lewis will now pick up his second foul and the team's second here in this third quarter. And, and once again, they beat the Boilers down the, co uh, the court. Coach Clark can't be happy with that. Yep. Take a look. Tegler will be at the free throw line for a pair. First free throw for Tegler is no good at the back of the rim. He was two for four earlier in the game. Blake Johnston comes into the game for Q1, replacing Braden Conley. Tell you what, Johnston really does a great job basketball wise. Ball comes out, good job by Cottrell Reed. He has the positioning. Well, he gets up in the air, doesn't he? He does. 28-23 the score. Nice rebound. Wide open is Cottrell Reed for three. No good at the back of the rim. And Kiwani getting pushed around there a little bit underneath. Uh, just the way that it worked out, unfortunately. Still five-point game, 28-23. 5-18 left to go in the third quarter. Back and forth. Willems goes. He's got a hand in his face. Gets it up instead uh, to Brody Clark. To Tegler. And now Peterson has it down low, and he backs it in, and he will put the shot, and he scores. That's a strong young man. He just backed Blake Johnson down to the basket. He's also a strong young man. And with the basketball all the way, shot that's going to go out. We're going to have a foul call. Two free throws coming up but for Brady Clark. This will be on Riverdale. It'll be their first team foul here in the second half. Let's see what they're going to call it on. He actually was not in the act of shooting. They're going to give him free throws, but he was in the act, not in the act of shooting. It didn't look like it, no. Uh, and that'll be on Peterson. That'll be his second. I'm checking. I'm sorry, third. So two free throws coming up for Brady Clark for the Boilermakers. 4.56 left to go in this first third quarter, excuse me, and first free throw is no good for Brady Clark. Coming into the game for Kiwani will be Colson Wellgott for Cottrell Reed. Second free throw is good. One for two for Kiwani, and the Boilermakers will be on defense. They trail it by six, 30 to 24. Stop the ball. Williams all the way, and ball tapped away by Brady Clark. Brady Clark has it, and now he will be fouled by Cadu. Cadu will pick up his first, and the team's second here. Brady Clark has got, have bruises up and down his legs. <laughs> As many times as he hits the floor. Well, that since the start of football, all the huh. all the hits you take playing quarterback, and then he comes to basketball, and it's the same way. You're right. With the ball is Devontae Jordan to Brady Clark. Plays Lewis, puts a runner up in the lane, no good, and it'll be out of bounds. A good call, Colin Kiwani. Yeah, they are. Probably a good call against Johnson. I think he went over the back. That is Blake's third. He'll have to have a seat here. That's the team's third already with 4.35 left to go in this third quarter of play. Kiwani trailing it by 6, 30 to 24, and they'll be on defense. Full court pressure by the Boilermakers. I like this idea, too. They get it across the 10 second. Tapped away by Blaze Lewis. Brady Clark has it. Gets it over once again, and Devontae Jordan has his pocket pick. Boy, oh, boy, that, they've got a heck of a, of a defense. Willems the basketball. He's going to be pushed a little bit. No call. Now a three-pointer put up by Cadu. No good. Rebound comes out. Peterson has it. He just walked three times. Oh, my goodness. Another foul. That should have been called on Peterson also. 30-24, a six-point lead for the Riverdale Rams. Jordan back up front to Blaze Lewis. Lewis gets the ball over and gets it to Colson Wellgott. 
Clark with a three, no good. Rebound comes out. Devontae Jordan has it. Dribbles back out and it's gonna be thrown away. 30-24 still a six point lead. Kiwani has only scored one point in this quarter. Yep. We're over halfway through it. There's your difference. 0 for 6 from the field so far. With the basketball is Willems all the way. Gets the ball over to Peterson. Peterson is going to be fouled. I like this though. And uh, make, him, make him earn it. Yep. And he is 0 for 3 from the free throw line. Just so you know. And he doesn't look particularly happy to be going there again. No, he does not. That's going to be the third foul called on Junior Murray. And Kiwani's fourth team foul with 3.39 left to go in this third quarter. At the free throw line will be Peterson, who has missed one, two, three in a row. First free throw is no good at the back of the rim. We got a second one coming up. 30 to 24, it's a six point lead. They've outscored Kiwani in this quarter, six to, there's not been a lot of scoring in this quarter, it's been defensive effort by both teams. Both teams. Six to one thus far. For your second free throw by Peterson, it's gonna be short. Kiwani gets the rebound. Junior Murray getting up in the air for that ball. Blaze Lewis now gets it over to Bertie Clark. Fakes the shot put up, no good. And the shot is just not falling for, for Brady tonight, unfortunately. For the basketball, Kiwani gets after it. Oh, good hustle by Blaze Lewis. And now a little bit of a scuffle there. Lewis just got the heck. A few times uh, there, we'll, you'll be able to see it. Now it's gonna be a foul call on Brody Clark. That's his second, and the team's third. And Peterson will have a seat, and replacing Dawson Peterson will be R.S. Morgan. Wow. Oh, boy. You might need the basket in the worst way here. Yep. With the basketball, Colson well got. And now long pass over to Brady Clark. Went up like a wide receiver and got it that time. Well got fakes the three. And gets it over to Junior Murray. They move the ball around nicely. Back to Well got for a three look. Oh, that was right on target. We see it, we Just saw it from here. A little bit no long. A little bit no long. Good. Canoe bringing it down. Boy, he's very cat quick, isn't he? He is. And now with the ball, Willems. 255 left to go in the third quarter. Willems has the basketball. Po poked away by Brady Clark. Jordan has it. I think no. gotta be able Blaise to Lewis something. for three left side. Oh boy, it was on target two. Go ahead, I'm sorry, oh. No, I just, boy, I don't know. What's, they just can't buy a basket right now. There's a lid on that basket. There's there's a huge lid on it, unfortunately. And part of the problem is a lot of them are shooting threes. Kiwani, their lack of an inside game right now is kind of really hurting them. Colson well got gets it, and they're gonna say what? We're trying to figure out what happened here. Uh, Kadu had his pocket pick there. Is the, what happened on the far side. The thing I don't like about that, Russ, is the ref across the floor called it when there was a ref standing right over it watching it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kadu with the basketball. Dribbles back and forth. The freshman against the junior. And he is being hounded. Now it's going to be on the floor. Oh, my goodness. And Kiwani gets it over to Jordan. He's going to go. Oh, I can't get a basket. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Now a foul going to be called. Oh, my Free gosh. Coming up for the... Riverdale Rams. Six to one in this quarter with 2.20 left to go. Two free throws coming up for I, the Riverdale Rams. I hate to say it, but the problem right there was the left hand, Russ. He just didn't get it to the basket. Yeah. That is the third foul on Blaze Lewis. And again, five fouls here in this quarter. And shooting two free throws will be Eris Morgan. He, he just needed to go right there and just drop it in. I mean, get up high as you can, just drop it in. And he kind of tried to go left hand. I, you know, I understand that, but he had a little time to do something different there. First free throw by Morgan is good. He's got a second one coming up. Blaze Lewis will have a seat, and he will be replaced by Cottrell Reed for the Boilermakers. Let's see if we can't get some pressure here offensively and second free throw is nothing but the bottom of the net again you don't want to put him at the free throw line again do you no those look those look pure Brady Clark with the basketball can wait down by their biggest lead of the night and there's eight points and another turnover by the Boilers mm. think he needs a timeout what do you think probably not a bad idea you've only scored one point in the quarter they've been outscored eight to one in this quarter 
Brody Clark with the basketball. Losing the handle on it. And now he's gonna get it back over to Jackson Tigler. And now a three-pointer put up by Willems, no good. Rebound comes out. Doing a good job of getting it that time was Brody Clark. Not a Kadu. Kadu down the baseline, puts a shot up, and it's good. Good looking shot that time by Kadu, and that's his first points of the night, and that's a 10 point lead. Boy, just that quick. It was 24 to 23 at the end of the half. At the half, yeah. And Kiwani was actually up 23 to 22. So it is a 12 1. 12-1 run. run since mm -hmm. like towards the end of the second quarter. Yep. There's your difference, and Kiwani can't buy a basket. Where are they? At? They've only they don't have any baskets in the second half yet because they only got one free throw. No, they are uh, 0 for 10 shooting. <laughs> yeah. And a couple of them were point blank layups. So. So 34-24 is the score. Kiwani trailing now by 10 in this game. Let's see if Colson Welgott can get an opportunity here to get the Kiwani back into it. Their defense is marvelous. I'm talking about Riverdale's. Long pass over now to Junior Murray. To Colson Welgott, to Brady Clark for a three look. There it is! Needed that. Yep. <laughs> With a basketball is Clark, and it's gonna be no good. Good defense that time, and it's gonna be out of bounds. It'll go to Kiwani. Back to a seven point lead, 34 27. 121 left to go in this third quarter. Kiwani's got some, they sure got some fight in them. I'd love to see it. Get after it. With a basketball, Brady Clark for another three. Oh my goodness, close, close. Murray gets it back. Junior Murray's going to be fouled. Oh, Good job by Murray, huh? Did he call travel or did he call foul? Foul. Okay, all right. And that's going to be, I believe, on Morgan, if I'm not mistaken. 23, Jacob Watson. Ticket back, that is on Jacob Watson. His first, and the team's fourth. And the ball comes in to Murray once again. Nice play by Murray that last time to Brady Clark. Clark reverses it, and he's gonna lose the handle, gets the handle on the basketball back, he gets it over, now it's gonna be taken there, and Devontae Jordan gets it and puts it in. Woo, boy. 34-29, the score. Kiwani going to get the ball back. No foul going to be called on Boilers. Two free throws oh, coming up. Oh, that's free throws. That's tough. Man. Yep. 34-20, back to a five. It was just 10 points. It was 34-24 now. A 5-0 run by the Boilers. The foul will be called on Devontae Jordan. His first. And the team's obviously a fifth. Kadu will be at the free throw line. He's got two points in the game. Two free throws coming up for that young man. And it's no good on the first free throw. We've got a second one coming up. Coming back in the game, Graydon Lewis, he'll replace Cottrell Reed. It's just, it's amazing to me. He's just so small. Look how small he is at the line there. Uh -huh. Just heck of a ball player, though. Yep, he really is. Five point lead for Riverdale, and this one is also no good. Brady Clark getting that ball, getting it up and in. And he has the basketball. Takes it. Parting of the, the Red Sea, no good. We're going to have a foul call. It'll be on Clark. It'll be an offensive ball, uh, offensive foul, excuse me. His first, I believe, yep, and the team's seventh. So there'll be no free throws here because it is the player control foul. And uh, coming back in the game for the Riverdale Rams will be Peterson, and Brady Clark has a seat, by the way, for Kiwani, and he will be replaced by, I think, I think, yeah, Cottrell Reed came back in. And with the basketball, they move the ball pretty well. This is not a starter for them, of course. He dribbles around pretty well. Could do with the basketball. Moves the ball around. You can tell they're a very disciplined team. Now Willems has it. Willems has not scored in the second half as of yet, by the way. And with the ball now, and the ball's gonna be knocked out of bounds. It'll go over to Kiwani. Good job by Lewis. And coming back in the game is Brady Clark. He'll replace Junior Murray. Nice getting the, these players for Kiwani a little bit of rest each chance they can. Yes, hopefully that helps in the fourth quarter here. And right now, you, if, if you're Kiwani, you don't want Riverdale to get another shot here. Well, comes over to Graydon Lewis. Yeah, I, mean, I agree with you. Go for the last shot here so they can't score again. Well, comes over once again 
Three-pointer top of the key by Reed. No good. Rebound comes out with six seconds, five seconds left to go. Kiwani gets the steal on this Clark, and he scores! Holy cow. Oh, my goodness. Big play by Brady Clark. He'll go to the free throw line. And Watson just got a foul. Jacob Watson with the second foul and the team's fifth with 2.3 seconds left to go in this quarter. The free throw is good! That was huge. Keep nice on. job, Brady. You want he back within two points. Where were we? Quick 8-0 run, quick 8-0 run. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. What a good job by the Boilers to come back. And I love the substitutions. Oh. It may pay off here in the fourth quarter. Yes. The, the substitutions, he got people in and moved them around a little bit, got them a little bit of rest. And so Clark comes right, Brady Clark he comes came in right the game, back in. And, and, what he, and look what happens. He gets a steal, gets that incredible basket and three point play. Yep. You're within two points. Yep. And it was just, we just talked about it. It was a, a tw 10 point a tw game. It was a 12. One run yes. since about uh, 30 seconds left to go in the first half. And then they scored the last two points, and they ended up in, in the second half then. They ended up with uh, 10 points. So it was a 12-1 12 -oh, 12 run as Kiwani went free throw. Now, as you mentioned, Kiwani, it's an 8-0 run by the Boilers, and it's not just a two-point game. If they could get ahead by a basket or two and, you know, they feel really good about themselves and you know maybe you know because they they've trailed the whole time it's it's that thing of getting ahead that makes you feel good kiwani was outscored in that quarter 10 to 9 by riverdale yeah but for a long time you thought it was going to be 10 to 1. So. yeah <laughs> well comes straight out to peterson and they get the ball down low on the low block now it comes back over and it's kadu has the basketball gets it back over comes inside to peterson Peterson really pushing hard, and he's being pushed hard, too. Now he gets it over. Oh, Willems with a nice play. That's his first points in the second half. He's got 15. And with the basketball is Brady Clark all the way. Good! He answers immediately, Brady Clark does. And that makes it 36-34 to 34 with 7.23 left to go in the basketball game. Very entertaining, good basketball game. Ball comes out. Kadu puts up a three, no good in front of the rim. Rebound comes out. Kiwani gets the basketball. And I'm telling you what, Blaze Lewis just got hammered. And the ball's on the ground. Kiwani gets the ball back. Good job that time by Kiwani's. Brady Clark takes the three, goes all the way, puts a shot up. No, gets it over. To Colson Will got for a three. Oh my, I thought that was in. I did too. And a timeout gonna be called. No, gonna be a foul called, excuse me. Well, guy just picked up a foul. That'll be his first and the team's first here in this fourth quarter. And hitting the floor hard that time was Jacob Watson, but uh, he just bounces right back up. All the resiliency of youth, huh? Youth, yeah, I'd be still be laying there for quite a while. <laughs> I wouldn't get up. <laughs> Wilms the basketball. Down the baseline he goes, and he puts a shot, and he scores. You can't stop the young man. He's got four in this quarter. He now has 17 in the game. 38-34 is the score. Brady Clark puts a shot, but he's going to, oh, my goodness. It was in and out. Ah, yeah, getting the ball back. Nice job by Devontae Jordan. Control read, long pass over. Blaze Lewis, now top of the key, Brady Clark, and he will get the ball over to Colson Wellgott for a long deuce, and it's good. That's a deuce. It's two for Colson Wellgott, and he's got five in the game with a basketball. Willems, dribble drive, puts a shot up, and he can't get it to go. Rebound comes out. Peterson has it. Now he's going to be pushed, or he's pushed, I should say. And there's people all over the floor. And both Willems and Peterson down there. Now, if, if I remember correctly, oh, did, did you see, I thought, Willems fell over Peterson. I could be wrong there. It looked like to me, yeah, they ran into each other. Yeah. I, no, I agree yeah. with you, Russ. Yep. 38 to 36, and Kiwani's got the basketball with six minutes left to go in this basketball game. But let me just say this. Yeah, I tell you what, Willems I shouldn't say that. That's not good language. I have to express myself saying this Williams is a heck of a player yes. for Riverdale, but they've got a lot of pieces, and I'm talking about a lot of good quality players oh, out yeah, there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I, even though he hasn't scored much, I can see why they play Kadu because he just 
he's nice and calm and just does what he's supposed to do out there. And, and you're getting him experiences at the same time. He doesn't really make any mistakes for being a freshman. And the other kids are just athletic. Yeah. Very much so, yeah. And they all look like they're about, what, 6'2", six 6'3"? Six they're big kids, yeah, they are. Yep, that's too bad. I, I hate to see anybody get hurt in the basketball game. But he'll have a seat now, unfortunately. We'll see if they can get him okayed and back in the game. Let's see what, what the uh, trainer does there. Kiwani will have the basketball. They that's, uh, trail by two here. That's Emma Corkle over there looking, you know, Kiwani's trainer looking at him. She's a great, uh, I say kid, she's like, I, she played for me a few years ago now. <laughs> yeah, Softball. And, and uh, Emma Carco, let's talk about her for a second. She's with OSF, and yes. she comes over here to take care of things. Yes. We really appreciate what she does for the student-athletes, for all the teams, not like Kiwani, but also the teams that play Kiwani. Yes, I mean, yeah, just, just like this, this instance right here. They don't have a trainer here, and she's over there taking care of him. And I like to see that. That's very important she was. for the for the for the youth of the area. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, taking care of them. And, you know, she was a great pitcher for me and just a, a great young lady. Basketball, Kiwani takes it out now. Colson Wellgott has it. And now gets the ball inside to Brady Clark. Brady, spin move, puts a shot, scores! You got a tie ball game again, folks! Nice job, Brady. I thought maybe he should have shot it right away, but he knew what he was doing and made a move and then made it. 18 points for Clark. Yeah, it's going by Cottrell Reed and the Boilermakers. 38-38, Kiwani with a chance to get the lead in this game. Let's see if they can get a good quality shot off. Brady Clark has it, and he'll put the ball up in the, not, can't, cannot get it to go. He's on the floor, and getting the ball back they are the Riverdale Rams. Willems could have had the basketball, and they waited for the defense for Kiwani to get back. Gets the shot off, and it's no good. Kiwani's Colson Wellgott with a nice board. Now to control Reed. Reed all the way. Puts a shot up. No good. Kiwani needs to take their time taking the yes, shots. Yes, they need to get here. a good yeah. shot off. Yeah. Yes, I agree with that. And boys, almost stolen. Now we're going to have what here? Timeout called by Time the out. Riverdale Rams, I think. Yes. Right in front of the Riverdale bench. We're going to have a hectic last five minutes here, Russ. <laughs> you know, I always say in basketball, Fury is fourth. Guess what? This is definitely a furious fourth. fourth. You better believe it. 38 to 38 is the score. And again, Willems has 17 points. But you know, Brady Clark, I just was starting to add them up. And we got back to the action. Go ahead and talk for me. Let me add them all up here, okay? Yeah, oh, well, Brady has definitely picked it up right here. But uh, I like what you said just before the timeout. Uh, Kiwani's right there. They're tied. They're back tied. You don't have to be so frantic. You know, I think the kids get caught up in the action sometimes. You know, take your time, move the ball around, get the best shot you can get. You don't have to just throw up the first one you see. 18 points for Brady Clark. So 18 for Brady Clark, 17 for Jake Willems. Well, I, I got a feeling Brady kind of felt uh, challenged by him. You know, he goes, I, I need to show what I can do too. So and he's really picked it up. And, you know, it's like two heavyweight fighters going after it. These two teams are right now, huh? Right, yeah. It's a, you know, and, Riverdale's 8-1, and Kiwani's, Kiwani's are tied with them. You know, Kiwani's a good ball club. They've just had a couple unfortunate losses. Ball comes in to Willems. Willems, dribble drive, puts a shot up in the paint. No good. Rebound taken out of there by Brady Clark and the Boilermakers. Long pass over to Colson Well got released, it, and he scores! Nice Kiwani's got the lead! Oh, my goodness. What a great pass from Clark and a great finish by and Colson Wellgott. And, and a Kiwani. turnover. Go ahead. I think I, he went to pass the ball, and he kind of got... Uh, the passing lane got cut off and he dragged his foot. So Kiwani's got the ball back. My goodness. And Kiwani up by 2, 40 to 38. Folks, now take your time. Yeah. 444 left to go in the game. It's hard not to get caught up in the assignment, but uh, the excitement, that's what they need to do, though. Three by Wellgott. No good. Rebound comes out. And getting the ball that time is, uh, I believe, Morgan. Shot put up. And it's good. Good looking shot that time by Willems. He's got 19. They've got a tie ball game here again, the Boilermakers and uh, the Riverdale Rams in this doubleheader. Ball comes over, wide open three, look! No good, rebound comes out. Oh, nice board that time by Devontae Jordan. And we're gonna have an offensive foul called. Not a popular call. That'll be on Brady Clark, that'll be his second. 
And the team second. Junior Murray comes back in for the Boilermakers. I like that. Get people some rest like we talked about earlier. That's yes, good. especially here. Like I said, these last four or five minutes are going to be really hectic. I mean, you're going to have to put out a lot of effort. Halfway through this fourth quarter, this game, this basketball game, three and a half quarters, it's a tie ball game, 40 to 40. Williams going to have an offensive foul called. I'm not, I didn't see what happened there. I, I did not either. Oh. I was watching the ball, and I think it happened away from the ball. And that is going to be called on Morgan, I think. Yeah, I think the only no. thing I could, yeah. Phelps. The, uh, number five. five. The only thing I can the Morgan. only thing I can think of is it was you know it was on a screen, a moving screen or something like that. Forty to forty, and you were so right with the basketball tie ball game. Are the Boilermakers? Blaze Lewis with the basketball. They slow things down a little bit to Colson Walgott. Gets the ball over now to Petrell Reed. Looks looks looks. Now gets it back over into the corner. Long pass now for Colson Walgott. They reverse it. Now a long pass thrown away by the Boilers. 40 to 40 the, is the score of this ball game with 3.36 left to go. They had the right idea that time. They were taking their time, but just, just a miscommunication. I don't see Cadu in there. I'm kind of surprised at that. No. And with the basketball, Willems has it up. No good on his shot. Rebound taken out there by Brady Clark. The strength of Brady Clark there. One of that rebound. And he will get the ball, and he'll score. Patience, yeah, he was patient, patient on that shot. Yep. He took the one more step to the basket. And now a foul going to be called here on the ensuing play. Junior Murray picks up the foul this time. That's putting down the two for Kiwani's Brady Clark. Wow. <laughs> you know it's, it's happening quick when you're having trouble writing stuff down. <laughs> yep. With the basketball are the Riverdale Rams. The ball comes back out front. And with it now is Watson. Watson puts up a shot, but a 13-footer. How did he even, he should be shooting more. Wow. That was a nice looking shot. Yep. 42 to 42. Tie ball game, 251 left to go in the basketball game. And oh my goodness, Cottrell Reed going after it. But you know what, see, you can't do anything about it. That was another mistake, another turnover for Kiwani. Willems just picked up his eighth point of the quarter. The eight point of the second half for that matter. 44-42, they've got a two point lead now. Ball comes in to Cottrell Reed. Shot put up, no good. Junior Murray fighting for it. No, he's gonna say it's a jump ball. And that will keep the ball with Kiwani. Watson comes back in the game. And he is limping noticeably. And he's not exactly the tallest young man in the world, but boy, he does got, get the most. Got that football player oh, mentality yeah. though. I'm yeah. going back out there. Ball comes out to Colson Welgott, takes the three. They've been in this zone defense all darn evening, haven't they? You want to trailing by two, 222 left to go in the basketball game. 44-42 is the score. Brady Clark has it, that gets it over for a three look for Cottrell Reed, no good, rebound comes out. And with it is Willems. Willems fakes it and gets the ball back. Top of the key, in between the rings now he goes. And he pushes back and forth looking to get, and he, he's gonna get the ball up, no good. Oh, how did he get that to go? How did he get that to go? It was good. He was falling down, and Williams gets it to go. His 10th point of the quarter. He's got 23 in the game. That was a Brady Clark shot right there that he made. Yep. He's very similar to the way he plays to Brady. He does, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. It could be mirror images of each other. Now, timeout called by the Q1 Boilermakers. Yep. Each team has. Each team has, I believe, two timeouts left. They're both of the one minute variety and uh, folks I apologize if I am talking a little bit loud but uh, if this is that t and poor exciting ball game poor Steve Osborne over <laughs> here I've, I've been uh, I've been pushing him and whatever and then uh, going five fives and whatever and uh, the poor guy is going to be all bruised up tomorrow maybe uh, maybe I have to go to church to repent on this one because uh, now uh, I'm fine Russ but I'm always exciting ball anyway. game yeah it is yeah 46 to 42, it's a four point game. Kiwani will have the ball out about on the uh, near, on the far side in front of their bench. Yeah, and we, we were hoping that this would happen in both games. Yes. But unfortunately the first game was not meant to be. But this game is a, a very, very close game. Uh, there might be something we wanna ask Coach Clark after the game. I don't know if he's coming up or not, but I felt a couple times when they got the lead and when they were tied, they just like, they went too quick. Need a little more patience. You can take your time and get a good shot. They've, they've, they've turned it over in those cases. 
Blaze Lewis with the basketball. Now over to Colson. Well got back to Lewis, right side. They're in the man to man defense now, aren't they? A bad shot this time. And it's going to be saved, but good job by Lewis. And with it, it's Colson Well got top of the key to Brady Clark. Clark fakes a three. All the way, shot up, no good. He gets his own board though, puts it up again, good! Nice play that Holy time. cow. Wow. He's got 22 in the game. So he got uh, 21 and 22 in this. It's amazing, isn't it? No, I'm sorry, 23 they've got for Willems. And, and Clark has uh, that many, and almost a steal that time. He gets the ball over. Shot put up, and it's no good. He wanted to get some. A good job that time, and it's going to go through this time. Goodness. Matt Brody Clark gets his second basket of the game. Brady Clark is going to have his pocket picked. He's on the line, Williams was. It's still a four-point game. Under a minute left to go in the basketball game. 48 to 44, 56.3 seconds left to go. Still don't need a three here, so yep. they don't, don't just throw up a wild shot. You know, I'm, by the way, Peterson's out of the game now. He, he, he is definitely hurt. He, he tried. He tried. Yeah. For the basketball are the Boilermakers. And they'll take the ball out. They're trailing by four here. They need a basket for sure. And it comes out long, not a close and well got. Well got looking to pass when he comes down with it. Now comes over Blaze Lewis for a three. No good. Oh, Rebound off but getting it back as well got. Control Reed. Yes! Time out by Kiwani. Control Reed. Wow. What a one-point game, Russ. <laughs> Holy it's your turn. You could hit me here. Buddy, there you go. 48-47. <laughs> one-point game here at HF Robin Gymnasium on the campus of Kiwani High School. And uh, you know one guy I know would, would love this? There's a guy by the name of Helmut Frederick Brockman. Brockman. And uh, he, uh, his picture's over here on the far side. Big guy. Excellent coach. Came over here with Ed Tunnicliffe. Ed Tunnicliffe, yeah. And uh, it, it was really good what he did for the athletic programs. Track, football, basketball here. That's, really why, they're both le the, that's why they're both legends in Kiwani high school yeah. history. I mean, both of those guys. Tunnicliffe, great ball player, great coach and leader. Boy, that's why, that's why the gym's named after him and the picture's on the wall right there. By the way, Cliff's jersey's out in the hallway. Yeah. By the way, what Mick mentioned, the reason why I know that he was brought here by Ed Tunnicliffe's family is because I heard it from Jerry Salisbury. Jerry Salisbury knows what's going on. It's Thanks, true. Jerry, for that information. I sure appreciate you, bud. Hope you're feeling better. And with the basketball are the Riverdale Rams. They lead it by one. They're gonna, Kiwani's gonna wanna go ahead and You're probably gonna have to foul if you're the Boilers. The two will keep the ball, I would yep. imagine. But not Willems, you don't wanna foul him, obviously. And here we go. And if you're Riverdale, that's where you're gonna wanna keep the ball with, with Willems. With the basketball, this time is watching this, oh, a foul. A timeout gonna be called by Kiwani. Kiwani will have the basketball with 20.9 seconds left to go and trailing by one. That was a great play by Colson Walgott. Hustling to the ground to get that ball. He simply beat the Riverdale player there with, with his speed. And uh, he was going perpendicular to his, that's not right, parallel to the floor. And uh, he got to the ball first, and then a great uh, timeout call by Coach. I honestly thought there that there might have been a foul call because the young men jumped on well got back. Yes. But, but it, it, what you're going to hear there is no, it's not a foul because they're both going for the basketball. They're both going for the basketball, and, and sometimes the ref will say, uh, I'm not going to make that call. I want the kids to decide it. So, I mean. So, Kiwani has one timeout left, and uh, Riverdale, no, they've got no timeouts left. Excuse me. Riverdale has got two timeouts left. And let me get, first of all, the possession arrow faces Riverdale. Riverdale. So, the next tie up. And on top of all that, uh, it's 48-47, a one-point lead for Riverdale. We need to reset to 20.9 here. Does Kiwani go for a shot right away, or do they go for the win at the end? I think they need to, to, to get the shot off. What do you think? I think they'll wait a little bit, unless they get the shot they want early. 14 seconds left to go. And shot put up, and good! Kiwani has the lead again! Clark. Clark again! Yes, and there's... Uh, 
There's still eight seconds left, though. That worries me, but uh, great job. He went through their whole team to get that basket, Russ. Yeah, and he just willed it. He you will. Know, in the first quarter, he still would do that. Yes. But I think that Riverdale would have stopped him. Yes. Because the, they, this has been a high in octane game. Yes. I mean, you, you'd think the score would be 99 to 98 instead of 49 to 48, as much action as we've had. Boy, what a game this! This has been such a, a pleasurable game for us to bring it to you. Again, Coach Tim Antwell, the AD here. Thank you for letting us bring you these games and these matches, wrestling, basketball, football, you name it. Uh, also, yes, the Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Chris Sellins. We appreciate that. Dean of Students, of course. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad Brady made that basket right there. The yeah. only thing, uh, eight seconds left, kind of, you know, I wish they'd have waited a little longer, but hey, you know, you can't be, you can't be choosy sometimes. He got yeah. the basket, got that shot, and he put it in. Now they just need to be strong defense without fouling. Cody Butler, the Dean of Students, and the superintendent-elect, or designated, designated, Rebecca Bainey. We really appreciate uh, all the support we've gotten to bring you these athletic events. Hopefully you're enjoying the broadcast as well as this game. Now, now the thing Kiwani's going to make him take some time to get the ball off the court here. Eight seconds left to go and a timeout call. 5.6 seconds. You were so right. 2.4 seconds came off the clock. Yes, and the thing Kiwani has got to watch out for here, because I've seen it so many times, Riverdale gets a shot off, and it's, a lot of times it's the rebound basket that beats you. I mean, you just got to make sure, play good defense, you know, because they'll probably get a shot off. You got to make it a tough one on them, and, and then make sure you get the rebound. And right now, Brady Clark is leading Jake Williams in this game, scoring wise, 24 to 23. Um, and, and, and he got off to a slow start, uh -huh. Brady did, but he's yep. really come on. Yep. He had uh, no points in the first quarter. He had seven in the second. But boy, he turned it on seven in the third. Uh, two, three is five, six, seven. Yep. And in the fourth quarter, he's got ten. Uh, Jake Willems had five in the first. He had eight free throws in the second for 13 and a half. And then he has ten in this second half. He's got 23, as we mentioned. Sixteen. No. Three. Uh, five point three seconds. Is that right, Steve Osborne? I believe you're right, Russ. Yeah. So taking the ball out of bounds in front of the scorer's table will be the Riverdale Rams. And back in there is Cadu. Cadu. Yep. He, he could, he's probably decent. And they got their probably their their least, uh, you know, least bit of a shooter out, the, out of bounds taking it out. Peterson also back in there with that ankle. Ball on the floor. Kiwani has it. That's going to be the end of the game on regulation. Are they going to call a foul? No, they're going to call a foul. If it is, it's going to be on Riverdale. Number one. Oh, ball still, oh. it's not four though, it's not. Yeah, so the be out of bounds with six tenths of a second left. It's yeah, put him on the out of bounds guy. There you go, good call coach. Yeah, it shows you how good of a coach Matt Clark is, Bob. Obviously. Watch the lob to two. Yep. Brady's on him, good job. Six tenths of a second left in this game. And here it comes. And he is gonna go in, and that is. We got a tie game. We're going to overtime. No, Kiwani wins by one. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. The Kiwani wins. Oh, and Riverdale coach is not happy. He thought Brady fouled him. Oh, my goodness. What a game. The Boilermakers defeat the Riverdale Rams. Holy cow. 49 to 48. Oh, we're going to have a happy Matt Clark up here. I can guarantee you that. Woo. Kiwani came on slow. They were down by 10 points in the third quarter. 10 points. They came roaring back. Roaring back. 8-0 run. And the Boilermakers come out. And again, I my my mind does not think properly. I was, I was in <laughs> overtime. And obviously it was not overtime. The Boilermakers get a, a win. They uh, get a heck of a victory over a very talented Riverdale team. Oh, Steve Osborne. Yes. The Boilermakers had a an opportunity to lose a game by double digits to a talented team. Yep. One that had only lost one game all year, Riverdale Rams. And they come out and they play well enough to get the victory. And you have to say all the nice things in the world about the Boilermakers, how well they played, because they had they had a tough road to hoe, or as my wife says, a road to hoe in this game. They were really down tremendously, and they come back 
roaring. And in that fourth quarter, they were down by four points, remember? Yes. A three-pointer put up and scoring by Cottrell Reed. Puts him within one. And then they get the ball down. They put the ball in the hands of a guy by the name of Brady Clark. Brady Clark. And he scores. And they get the victory. 49-48. to 48. What a great job by the Boilermakers. Uh, they... And the defense was impeccable also because the guy taking the ball out of bounds was Peterson. Yes. And Peterson put the ball out, and, and they tried to get it over. I think it was to, uh, to to Clark. Clark had the basketball, and it went on somebody's foot, and they went ahead and, and in, got uh, the ball basketball up, and they called the foul on Devontae Jordan in the ensuing play. I thought they were going to have Had a foul throws. to give, though, fortunately. Yes, so, thank goodness. But, yeah. but uh, the thing about that, all that stuff happening, the clock was running. <laughs> it got down to 0.6 seconds, so. Oh, what a game, what a game, what a game, what a game. Oh, that was Boilermaker basketball. And as I mentioned, I think Coach Helmut F. Brockman would have just loved to see this yes. basketball game. And the effort. You talked about Colson Well got going parallel to the floor, flying on the yes. floor, trying to get that basketball. You see Brady Clark on the floor trying to get the basketball every chance he possibly can. Our congratulations to the Boilermakers. And joining us here momentarily will be Matt Clark, and he will be talking a little bit about this game. Let me go ahead and give you some scoring numbers here. I have uh, Brady Clark leading the all scorers with 24 points. I've got Cottrell Reed with a total of uh, eight points. And also scoring for the Boilermakers, Graydon Lewis with three, two for Blake Johnston, seven for Colson Welgott, and three for Cashin, Cashin Eller. I'll say it right. I apologize. Cool. Ellerbrock. Cash and Ellerbrock. And uh, so, really, a great performance by the Boilermakers. Leading the way of scoring for the, uh, for the Riverdale Rams of Alex Kelly. Jake Willems. He had 44 points on the night. I can see why he got that many points. And Kiwani's defense was great. That's one thing mm -hmm. we had to talk about with, with the coach. He ended up with 23 points in the game. Uh, we also had scoring doing a really good job was this Dawson Peterson. Big kid. Mm -hmm. He had six points in the game. Uh, eight points for Jackson Tegler. And also Brody Clark ended up with four. Four for Eris Morgan, by the way. Two for Paxton Cadu. And uh, two for uh, Jacob Watson. Uh, the big key in that third quarter, after all of the, after all of the uh, free throws scored by them in the first half they were 10 or 14 in the second half Steve Osborne they only had two free throws they made Morgan got them both and they were really pretty free throws nothing but the bottom of the net on both of them so but they tried one two three four five six seven eight nine they had nine free throws and they were only two for nine in that third quarter and that is not what they would like to have obviously and so therefore they were 12 for 23 in the game. They came back down to earth. Didn't well, they? Oh, the difference for that was it was not Willems, Willems shooting them in that. You know, they had the Kiwani was getting the right person to the line. So for them, well, it was a great job. So you got some stats. That wouldn't I, I, well, hopefully they're close to being correct. Um, shots. Kiwani ended up actually 16 for 48. Russ with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six three pointers. So what is that? 33 yeah. percent. Um, Riverdale ended up 15 uh, for 42, so just uh, maybe close to 40%. So Kiwani actually got one more basket than they did. Um, Riverdale was only one for 12 from the three-point line. You know, that kind of hurt them. Rebounds, Riverdale out-rebound Kiwani 39 to 28. Um, you know, they kind of had the lead in that category the whole game. And then turnovers, Kiwani uh, cut their turnovers down and only ended up with 14. and. Uh, Riverdale had eight. Riverdale had 18. Great job, coach. Woo, boy. All right, joining us now is the head coach of the Kiwani Boilermakers. We'll let him get his breath there for just yeah. a minute. Wow. Uh, you had a couple of uh, fans up here really uh, going going off, uh, yeah. trying to, to make sure that you guys got a victory. We tried to will it. <laughs> we, 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 we're we too big of guys to be on that floor to do anything <laughs> we, about we it. We kind of so. stopped broadcasting uh, and started cheering, which yeah. we shouldn't do, but <laughs> hey, I couldn't help it. There were some crazy <laughs> things that... Uh, I don't know. Yeah, we're fine. Okay, there yeah. we go. Um, Defensively, tell us about you. Your defense was excellent. You know, there at the end, we... We ran 1-3-1 one, one, um, just to kind of give them a different look and make it tough for them. So um, 
it, it, it was them executing what we asked them to do there at the end. They did a really good job. I noticed you brought Ellerbrock in there. A lot of feedback online. Feedback? Okay. Um, I'll tell you what. Why don't you give me your headset? Okay. Yep, there you go. There you go. Sorry, Coach. No problem. Right Sorry about that. You're all right. Okay. There, that's a little better. Yeah, there you okay, go. Okay, gotcha. Okay. We'll, we'll kind of go back and forth. So, I guess there right. at the end, we, we our man-to-man -man has been – we switched it up this year. Um – because it's a different team, you know, you got to go with your strengths, and I think our man-to-man -man defense, most of the time, is our best. Um, it's nice to have that 31 zone defense there at the end to give them a different look, and which we hadn't run all game long. I'm just proud of the kids there because that first half, I mean, even the third quarter, we were throwing the ball out of bounds, like you know, past each other and over. I, it was just some craziness at times, and we battled and we battled and we battled, and I, I really think there at the end, give the credit to the kids because. They listened finally, right, in those last few timeouts. And I say finally because sometimes they don't because um, they're kids, right, and, and adults don't do great things either sometimes. But they finally let us help them win. That way they can win. It's not our win. It's the kids' win. So that was, that was awesome at the end. Well, what we were watching was you were down by 10 points in yeah. that third quarter. It was a 12-1 to 1 run. Was it? And all of a sudden, you guys came roaring back, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a guy that I'm a – Brady Clark, I, anyway. He had one tonight. Wow, did he ever have one tonight. He yeah. had a heck of a game. And he was uh, uh, tremendous and uh, spearheading getting that back in that game to put you down by just two. Yeah. You took him out of the game, <laughs> maybe to get a brief rest. <laughs> sure. And then you got him right back in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it seemed like he got a little bit of a second win there, and he gets the three-point play and, yep. and two points. That was big. Um, he, it's tough what I have to do with him and what he has to do with me being the coach and the player. It, it is not what people probably think it is. Like, I, I I don't baby him. I don't favor him. I am harder than heck on that kid, probably too much, and I probably hurt his game by being too hard on him. But what he does and what he shoulders, he takes some tough shots. Like, you know, you know, I hear it in the crowd, and he hears it too, which doesn't help, you know, when, when people say pass the ball. Like, he, he leads us in assists. He leads us in the right plays a lot of times. Yeah, he takes some tough shots. But what he does, rebounding, getting in passing lanes, doing dirty work as well as the guy that needs to make the play at the end of the game the kids i think if they would buy into that more as a team like he doesn't want to be the team he does not want all that pressure but tonight it looked like to me they finally found their their jobs and their roles and and it that showed there the 12-1 run wasn't him it was everybody hustling um you know i love to see that basketball dive on the floor you know pound you know just just reaching in there and grabbing those loose balls you don't practice that, right? You don't want kids to get hurt. That's just toughness and want to, and that's why I won the game tonight because of our toughness and getting those loose ball uh, turnovers. When well, talking earlier in the broadcast, uh, in the fourth quarter, well got went parallel to the floor mm -hmm. and was able to get the ball, and he had somebody falling on the top mm -hmm. of him. He's checking his elbows right now down there. And you made a good timeout. Yes, yeah. It was a great timeout. I don't know what it is about the Kiwani staff, but if the boys and the girls, you guys know when to call a times out, timeouts, which is tremendous. And at, at the worst yeah. points of those, they don't give it to you, you know? Mm -hmm. But they sure give it to you a lot when there's a loose ball and your kid gets it real quick and they, and they, they want to favor that hustle. They want to favor that play. So, you know, you don't want to use too many of those early in the game. I'm glad we saved some of those. I'm not a big timeout caller in the first half. If I'm calling timeout in the first half, it's because we're doing something bad energy-wise or we're, we're mentally not doing something right. But it's nice to have those in the pocket in, in the fourth quarter late to, to get those ball back and situational things. Now, I, we don't keep assists up here. Yeah. But I didn't see many assists at your last game against IVC. No. But I saw a ton of them tonight. I wouldn't, that's not a good, a good adjective. Oh, we were in double figures. A lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and my point in saying that was the fact that your team was looking for the open man. Mm -hmm. No, we... Sometimes with, with Brady and Blaze, especially Brady, the, the kids know he can do so much with the basketball, and they watch him sometimes. If they just cut, like he'll find you, he'll make a move, and he'll find you on the move. We, we had to do a better job at that. But, yeah, we shared the ball better when we made that run. Our defense got better. But, yeah, you're right. And, and sometimes it's not the, the first pass for the assist. It's the next one. You know, we got some of those tonight. I know the kids are frustrated at times. You know, I'm hard to deal with at times. But hopefully this win can kind of get us over the hump of you know, what good basketball looks like. Because I think we have a lot of talent, mm -hmm. um, and talent's not enough, you know. Talent gets you to some spots, but the, the toughness and, and the team, you know, it, it's such a cliche to say team basketball, but, but some people can't figure it out, you know. I truly believe we're 6-4 and four now. 
going into Erie. And there's some good teams at Erie, but I, I think we're, we're heading in the right direction. We've played a tough schedule, and we wouldn't have won this game today without that tough schedule. So, And that's that's very important yeah. to say that. Uh, real quickly, Willems had hmm. 23. Mm -hmm. in, in, in saying that, he had 44 just <laughs> not very long ago. Yeah, he's a good. A week ago. Yeah. And so Brady had uh, Brady Clark had 24, and he had 23. My point in saying that and mentioning that was the fact that, that Willems is a heck of a player, and <laughs> you kept him down. He did not make a lot of three-pointers. No. I think he had one in the entire game. Well, I guess my question with that is um, – my question with that is I know it's a, a team game like mm -hmm. you're talking about. Uh, as an individual, do you think Brady kind of took it personally playing against another really good player I, like him? You know, at the time, you don't want to build it up to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup, right, but exactly. Brady is smart enough to know, right. like, if that guy's going to get, I've got to get mine. Right. You know, and i gotta, I got to kind of be even with him. Um, but, yeah, he takes it. Brady is a competitor mm -hmm. almost oh, to a fault that. at you times, you know. Yes. Almost he tries too hard at times. Um, I, I told him we had, had a meeting with Blaze and Brady before the game. I said, guys, this is your team, you know, and, and you have to be leaders. You have to do the right things. But, Blaze, you got to shoot the ball. And, Brady, you got to be more efficient. And tonight, I think Brady took a couple tough shots he shouldn't have taken, but he was way more efficient. Yes. If he can play at that e efficient level, he's really good. And that Willems kid, he's, I think he's five away from 1,000 now. Right. I mean, he's, he's an all-state player. He was last year. He, he's really, really good. And, and he's got a great game to his left hand pull up. He's got a great great right hand of the basket he's got a great three-point shot he's a he's a player so keeping him to 23 sounds you know sounds like a lot but he's pretty well, and good i like your answer to that too brady you know you, you don't make it obvious but mm -hmm. you know that's kind of the back of his head oh, yeah. so i want to get mine like you said right and the only other question i had was i was interested in how you started with five and five tonight uh, i just wonder what your thoughts were with that well we, we <laughs> the, the the first half did not go as scripted as i wanted it to okay. um it worked out well because of that second five unit, there's not much drop off, you know? So uh, we, we mixed up the lineup tonight. We, we kind of wanted to, you know, you don't want to play with the kid's head. You know, I'm not, that wasn't a mind game, but it was these kids have been playing hard, doing the right things, saying the right things. They're going to get rewarded and they deserved it. The five guys that started tonight. Um, and then we got those other five guys that came in and they kept us in the game that right, first quarter. Exactly. So it worked out really well. Looks like great coaching, right? But well, it was just by chance. Yeah. Decide if you were trying to send a message. Yes. To it, somebody, or if it was just situation. It, it, it was a message at the beginning of the game, and it was a message at the halfway through the first quarter. <laughs> yes, there's it. That, that's the answer. Yep. Coach, we saw a really good physical play. You, you got your yeah. guys didn't back off at all. No. You gave them everything they wanted. You had a lot of fouls, but your defensive pressure was good. And oh, you had uh, some information there about uh, turnovers, and I think that was oh. the big thing. Mm -hmm. And most of the turnovers were actually called. Uh, were actually caused by the mm -hmm. key money defense. Uh, right. they, they actually had 18. You only had 14. Really? At least so there you go. Had, yeah. Well, you win the turnover battle in any sport, you know, and like, it usually helps you. Um, they're, you, know, you look at the, the, the freshman they got to play, and it's like, guys, this kid's 5'2", but he's a player. Yeah, right? Yeah. And so yeah. they have him. They got the Willems kid, of course. You got the Peterson. He's not real tall, but he is just a force when he gets the ball. You know, he's not ultra athletic, but man, you can't stop him. You know, he's six yeah. one. Yeah, he's, yeah. I was like, geez. You know, he's a, he's a strong kid, but he's a smart kid. Mm -hmm. um, they're eight and one for a reason, uh, for sure. So that was a good win. That'd be a tough one to lose going into the break, because um, we've got a whole week of practice and weight room coming up before Christmas. So um, it's nice to go in on, on a very positive note. I, I, what? I just thought of one more thing. I'm sorry. You said weight room. Yes. Brady's is so much stronger. Than yes. Him. And I know he worked hard at it, and I just wonder what you thought of that. Yeah, so it's a good question. Um, a lot of people don't see you know, the kids that you, you get a lot of minutes to have earned those minutes, not just on the court, but in the classroom, as well as the weight room. The weight room is the separ uh, separator when it comes to sports. Um, well, any sport, anything, really. So last March, March 1st, he didn't like the way his season ended because he struggled a lot of up and down, you know, a lot on his shoulders. But he went in the weight room March 1st and never came out of it five days a week. It showed on the football field, you know, when he made All-State and helped that team win. You know, there's a lot of, lot of good players on that team uh, that hit the weight room, too. So um, he's a good leader. You know, I don't sing his praises enough because I'm so hard on him. But, yeah, it's a good question. He, the weight room is a difference maker. Um, he doesn't finish in the rim, but he gets up there, and his strength gets him to the rim. One thing I did, wanted to mention, I just going to talk about that, oh. Steve Osborne does a great job also uh, here, and we want to make mention, 
when he goes up and gets the, the basketball and somebody's got it with him, mm -hmm. they don't keep it. No, not uh, usually. It, the strength it, it shows there. And congratulations, by the way, he's going to be playing in the Shrine game. Yeah. Which is nice, too. Uh, Brady That's Clark cool. is. Yeah. Very cool. Very nice. Well, we, I know you want to get uh, going and have some fun this weekend, uh, but I want to say thank you so much for coming up. Yeah. And the Boilermakers get a victory Ooh. at a hard-fought hard victory. Fought. A lot of guys on the floor today. That's good. Oh, boy, it was. Oh, Bruce is going in the break. Okay. Any All right, guys. things we'll let you go? No, I, I appreciate you guys. I say I don't know if I say it enough, but um, your guys' coverage, you know, Steve here today or, or Jeremy or the other crew we had, you know, with, with Bob and Marcus and, and Russ, you know, the voice of Kiwani here, Boilermaker Basketball, you know, we, we appreciate you guys, and we'll go back and watch this and enjoy it. Um, uh, this weekend, I know my son watches it and likes to listen to the, the reactions from you guys. And, you know, it's just fun to, to have this kind of coverage and be able to come up here and talk about how the good things the kids do and, and just be honest with you guys and, you know, have a good time about yeah. it. And that's the way we like to do it. We don't want to tear kids down. No. We just want to say, hey, great play, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. We've never heard anything other than well, that. Sounds good. Yeah, that's right. Right. Yeah. No reason to. to That's yeah. right. Thanks a lot, guys. Okay. Appreciate you. Thank you. The head coach of the Kiwani Boilermakers, Matt Clark. A wonderful victory for the Boilermakers tonight. And uh, joining us again is going to be Steve Osborne. Steve, um, you've got some stats. You didn't go over them yet, did you? Uh, yeah, I so believe I did. Why don't you hit them again? But I'll please. hit them again. Yeah. Let me yeah. uh, let me open up my book here. Um, shooting Kiwani ended up shooting 33%. 16 for 48. They actually uh, had one more basket than Riverdale, which surprised me, who ended up 15 for 42. But, of course, Riverdale had the free throw advantage. Um, rebounds, Riverdale kind of controlled the glass throughout the game. You know, they ended up with 39 to 28 uh, victory on the boards. But, uh, you know, the, the scoreboard's what matters. But uh, and, yeah. it's, and it's like we were talking with Coach. Uh, Riverdale actually ended up with 18. Kiwani only ended up with 14 turnovers. So, uh, wow. good defense there. Okay, well, let me get the scoring once again. Leading the way in scoring for the Riverdale Rams was Jake Willems, and he is an excellent player, as uh, Coach mentioned uh, to you, Coach Clark mentioned to you. Uh, second leading scorer was Jackson Tegler with eight. Six for Dawson Peterson, the big guy underneath, six foot one, about 260 or so, a big kid. And he, he's a nice ball player. Eight for Jackson Tegler, as I mentioned, and uh, six for Dawson Peterson again. Four apiece for for Brody Clark and also uh, uh, Eris Morgan. Uh, Paxton Cadu had two and two also for Colton Hubbard. For the Boilermakers, they were led in scoring by Brady Clark with 24, uh, eight for Cottrell Reed, seven for Colson Walgott, and uh, three apiece for Cashin Ellibrock as well as uh, Graydon Lewis, and uh, two apiece for Blake Johnston and also Devontae Jordan, again, the Boilermakers. The first quarter, they ended up uh, uh, trailing at that time 15 to 10. In the second quarter, the Boilermakers had 13 points uh, uh, to nine for the uh, Riverdale Rams. In the third quarter, it was uh, uh, nine points for Kiwani and uh, 10 for Riverdale. And the final score of the game, if I'm not mistaken, was uh, 49 to 48. Is that right? That is correct. And that means the... And that doesn't mean overtime, Russ. <laughs> that does not mean... Yeah. <laughs> See that? <laughs> I was excited. So I understand. In, in the fourth quarter, Kiwani ended up with uh, with enough points to win the game. We'll just say that. And, and the uh, Riverdale Rams really did uh, a really good job, too. But Kiwani... Congratulations to the Boilermakers. We're very happy for them, and it was great to see them come out with a victory. And don't forget, we will have uh, the game uh, on next uh, two weeks from Friday, or from yesterday, will be on WKEI. We will be on the air about if they win the first two games of their pool against Orion on Thursday and uh, Stark County on Wednesday, then we will be on the air. Uh, the game's supposed to start about 7.30. About 7.15 we'll be on the air for that game. And then, uh, so hopefully we'll have a, a, a victory there for Key one They'll be playing for the championship overall. We'll see what happens. And uh, so, any last thoughts, so? though? Uh, excellent afternoon of basketball. Uh, the, the Boilers went one and one, losing the girls' game, winning the, the boys' game, and... Um, like I said, where would you rather been this afternoon with it being so nasty outside? You're darn right. The, the girls' game went to Riverdale 63-34, to and the Boilermakers win the, the varsity contest in, in uh, strong fashion, 49-48. to uh, Thanks very much to Jacob Doner, our videographer, for bringing us 
the, all the videoing of this of these games. We really appreciate what he does. And also, for Steve Osborne by my side, this is Russ Hughes saying good night and God bless. <laughs>